I'm going to be presenting uh, a paper on recalling, which is a collaborative work between myself and the artist Dr. Tracy Kelly, based in Germany. We have been collaborating since 2015, working with notions of resistance to language, and uh, it forms part of a subversive investigation into writing and a visceral encounter of writing in terms of the excavation of self and sight as a mode of hum a mode or human extension into the world. Uh, the work is developed and made for uh, at the site, um, in this case of uh, an old school staircase and chalkboard. And most recently we have also been visiting abandoned chalk pits in the UK, making work in, in the chalk pits and very much thinking uh, around the ideas of abandonment and uh, femininity and the idea of writing and location as a site of subject intervention. So um, the project has been very interesting in terms of what has been discovered in relation to our pedo pedagogy and how our artistic collaboration can provide opportunities for academic institutions and academic lecturers. I am an academic lecturer in the UK. How, how we can provide opportunities for students uh, to experience uh, art projects with pro professional artists um, and to experience opportunities with their lecturers outside of the university environment and how we can support student learning in the wider context of city arts communities that their place of study is located to get the students beyond the studio outside of the four white walls of an institutionalized gallery space and into a real world context. So Tracy and I were invited to have a residency at an independence art organisation called Primary, based in the UK in Nottingham. And we were invited to collaborate together to deal with some of the ideas that I've mentioned earlier that we were interested in. Part of the reason we were invited to participate was because the venue is an old Victorian primary school. And the organisation, appropriately named Primary, is an arts-led space that exists to support creative research and develop new ways of engaging audiences, offering a, a dedicated art studio alongside flexible spaces and flexible learning inside and outside of the building, where artists from around the world can meet and work in the heart of Nottingham. So this is a really interesting way of getting students to think about practice and how it can be located outside of the academy. So primary is this uh, centre for artists and public to share, to experiment and to learn about contemporary visual art through an ambitious programme of events and activities. Primary transformed the disused school, Victorian school, which I mentioned, into a cultural resource. Now how it did that was by offering uh, dedicated artist studios for 30 selected artists. Um, and I actually am one of the 30 artists and have been based at Primary since 2010. Um, and it uses the project spaces that it has in, a, in an interesting and flexible way that supports a public programme and it also now has links with different universities and colleges. So the residency uh, at primary was called the Drawing Board and obviously uh, this provided a unique opportunity for Tracy and I to have some time outside of the context of the university to make work together, to make, to do and to redo. The drawing board is a space for handwritten performances. 
that aims to turn a corridor into a destination and return the walls of an old school building in Nottingham to their former use as a place of display. The drawing board explored how we write, how we perform writing and how writing performs. Curated by artist Michael Pinchbeck as part of the public programme of Primary, Tracy and I embraced a working ethos that closely linked with this year's thematic questions that are being asked at Cumulus of what do we want to redo and how do we redo? So we situated ourselves on a stairwell over the period of a month. We did this so that we could redo things, so that we could continue to remake work, create film, photography, installations. We created performative encounters and choreographic gestures and sequences. We played with chalk, the raw material. We invited other artists to talk with us on the staircase by the drawing board. We left messages for each other. We created encounters and experiences for each other to find. The theme for Redo, this year's biannual Cumulus Conference, aims to playfully inspire and challenge and develop the role, the relevance or scope of art. But none of us can do this alone. And so, uh, in keeping with these questions that are being asked at Cumulus, Tracy and I actually also started to think about how our ideas could turn into actions how our actions or inventions became innovations. We wanted to think about how, as artists, we resist certain expectations of language and we wanted to think about writing as a visceral encounter. So how does research and practice become uh, an excavation of self and sight or an excavation of art pedagogy. Focus not only in our residency was placed on writing about location, about the idea of sight and subject, but it also links closely with those very same concepts that we have as art teachers. How do we create spaces for people to learn where human relations are developed and cradled? How do we think about institutionalised behaviours, places, spaces such as the drawing board? How do we think about them in terms of their architectural or cultural values? Alongside our investigations on the residency, we invited a range of people to work with us. We invited a painter to come to document our process and they created a triptych in reply to our invitation. We worked with a photographer to document our work. We invited master level students to come to meet with us on the stairwell instead of in the classroom. We got students out of the studio and into the city. We brought them into the doors of a professional run arts venue to engage not only with us but with other artists working in that building. I invited my students to bear witness to my own arts practice. I invited a different kind of open and honest dialogue with them about my own work and not only about their work. We were after all outside of the academy and redoing things, actively sharing ideas with them. Tracy and I decided to create three internships for Bachelor of Fine Arts students to create an opportunity for them to gain hands-on experience, whether this was from making canvas frames, to editing footage, or to helping us organise the private view. Our artistic investigation brought into focus how we perform writing, how writing performs within broader cultural discourse. And now we're working with the South Coast in the UK, 
where we are starting to think about how we can have an expanded dialogue with the geographical chalk formations of the Needles, the Isle of Wight, and possibly with uh, working with the cliffs of Dover. So our work has now started to bring in questions of social inclusion, climate, environment and economic growth. The internships that our project provided opened conversations with students and other local artists in a new way. It provided a rich platform for discussions about matters like social inclusion, climate, economics, outside of the university. It also, from a pedagogical perspective, allowed me as an arts lecturer and educator and practitioner to blur these roles in an effective way. It gave students a new kind of experience which I could not have provided for them solely in the classroom or their allocated studio space. Tracy and I had the space and freedom to impact not only our own disciplines but to impact and reach further with the learning and the learning outcomes for students. We worked in a real world context. We created new spaces for dialogue. We invited local colleges and four of our regional universities to attend a talk hosted by the curator that took place at primary. We also created an exhibition to share the works that we produced. Again, this was open to the public and we worked with students to put this exhibition together. Our project, our thinking around the project and the design of the project in the way that we engaged and provided opportunities for students to be part of the project supports the redo initiative and agendas that calls for new models of thinking that includes ideas around the human. Our interpretation of the human factor is the provision of opportunity for students to have real experiences of art practice and to witness firsthand a professional working collaboration between international artists such as myself and Tracy to really see how things are done or in the ethos of this conference of how we redo things in the art world. Tracy and I advocate a blended learning that provides students with new opportunities to support and encourage their artistic and professional development both inside and outside of the academy space by trying, by testing new things, through sharing and redoing. Thank you for listening.